Bonjour, everyone. Welcome to another special, it's a special live stream edition. Another live stream edition of Cafe Day. Renee, James here, joined once again by the start of the show. Mr. Renee Dupree. Renee, it's almost the end of another week. Every stream is special, Jameson. Every stream is special. And today is a special day because my friend Paul London will be joining us. And of course, he'll be fashionably late. He is currently flying across the United States of America and will be landing at approximately 7 p.m. Eastern. So in the meantime, let's talk about the wrestling news. Wrestling news. Um, it's been interesting. <laughs> okay, give it to see. I haven't really been. I've been so busy with the apartments and we're redoing buildings and units. Uh, give it to me, man, because I know nothing. It's all Greek to me. What? Go ahead. Should I think with that, let's let's do a bit of a tribute. So yesterday, uh, I told you, sadly, one of your great friends in the business, uh, the late, great Aki Bono, sadly passed away. Um, you put a quick message on social media, and um, people's responded very good to that and um, saying their prayers to Aki's family and such. Yeah. So I know we're going to be doing like a special tribute episode uh, this coming Monday, possibly with a special guest to join possibly, you. Possibly. Um, possibly. But in the I'll meantime... Know, I'll know sorry. on Sunday for sure. I'll know on Sunday for sure because um, I want to bring on Tayo Kea, who we had on. He's one of our first guests. Now he has a shoot government job and he doesn't know if he'll be free Monday evening. He's in Hawaii. Mm. So if, if we can, we'll have him on Monday and it'll be strictly for Bono. A tribute show on Monday, but uh, that's way to be seen. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, in the meantime, you've spoken about bonus in the past and shared some um, fun stories. Um, hmm. Any other quick stories you want to share before you do the uh, tribute episode? Oh, geez, just man, he was a giant of a man, like six foot nine. Six I didn't foot realize ten. he was that big. He was that big. And grand, the first ever non-Japanese Grand Sumo champion originated from Hawaii, moved over to Japan when he was 18 to train and, you know, live in the dojos and train sumo. And uh, the guy could, oh, just a heart of gold. I mean, talk about a guy who just, we go out, he'd pick up the tab because he didn't care. You know, we'd go out to these Filipino bars, sing karaoke all night. He'd have either a sponsor or he'd just pick up the tab himself because... You know, the dude was a fucking king. He would get mobbed any town we would go to in Japan from, you know, Tokyo to Osaka to, you know, anywhere, Okinawa Island to Hokkaido, Northern Island. He went He went out, he got mobbed by Japanese fans. It's like, mm. it was like a rock star, you know? And uh, just, just unbelievable human. And he's, he's greatly missed. Yeah. I really miss him. I guess one of his big highlights for North American fans and most European fans, I guess, was his match with uh, the Big Show at WrestleMania 21. Mm. Uh, you wasn't on the card, but you was there that weekend. Uh, did you run into him that weekend? Or if not, yeah. did yeah. you have any interactions with him? What was he like around everyone in WWE? Uh, I just saw him backstage and he had like his, I don't know what they call it, you know, this thing on you know where yeah and uh just said hi you know whatever i didn't just and then uh afterwards when i was touring with him he told me that he got vince saw him smoking because he was a he was heavy smoker all the sumos right. are and he just vince gave him these dirty looks because he was smoking a cigarette backstage right vince hates cigarettes mm -hmm. right. but uh yeah uh we'll, we'll wait We'll wait um, till Monday. Hopefully, Kaya can come on, and we'll just dedicate the whole the whole show to him because he was oh, a great guy. Right. Yeah. So, um, where do we start? Okay. Eight. We spoke about the other day. AW. We're going to get into the ratings later on. So we mentioned punked an interview. Spoke about Jack Perry and what happened at Wembley. So over WrestleMania weekend, um, apparently Tony Khan was really upset about the comments made, and he they announced that over WrestleMania weekend they was going to be airing the footage. Why? I don't know why. Obviously, a ratings grab. 
besides that, there was no purpose to this video. So a lot of people, I guess from AEW side, was hoping it would be a gotcha moment, like whatever Punk said, it, it, something else happened. Now, I think you've seen the footage. I would share the footage. Unfortunately, Tony Khan and AEW's copyright struck everyone on social media for airing that footage. Ariel Humani, who'd done the interview with Punk, he said he got a flipping email or like a warning. Um, so we can't share the footage, everyone. But basically what happened in the footage was pretty much everything that Punk said. Um, they, there was a coming together. Punk said some stuff saying, why are you doing this stupid shit? Allegedly, Jack Perry said, I'll F your mom. Allegedly. Yeah, you couldn't actually hear it because there was no audio. And Perry went to Brushy set, and that's when Punk basically grabbed him, put him in like a front lock guillotine. Um, Samojo came over, basically broke it up. Chris Hero and uh, Alistair Black, uh, Malachi Black for AW fans, put Punk to one side. Chris Hero looked like he was about to have a nervous breakdown. He was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm a, I'm a big guy. I didn't realize how much weight Hero's put on since leaving WWE. Really? Yeah. Okay, I, didn't know, I didn't notice that part. Uh, is he that big now? He's getting big. And I, and this comes from someone who's a fat guy, okay? So, okay. you know, I'm allowed to say it. Um, and, like, basically, Hook and Samojo put Perry to the other side. Punk was... It was, like, behind the corner. Apparently, he was shouting something to someone. Allegedly, that was Tony Khan. And I think that was, like, allegedly, Punk was saying, you know, I quit. Two minutes after him and Samojo had the match out in Wembley, and that was the last time people saw Punk. So, so sorry, sorry. The, the incident happened after the match, after he went be, out. In that. Before. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> lit had, like literally, like a couple minutes after this incident, him and Joe went out and had a match, and good match as well. So, that's what happened. Now, I don't know what AW was thinking because the fans in attendance, they were chanting CM Punk. The AEW fans. Bit of mock from everyone on social media, myself included. Uh, <laughs> someone said they're doing it for the clicks. And Eric Bischoff said, yeah, everyone's the winner but Tony Khan in the scenario because everyone's got so much content to make from this. And it just didn't lead to anything. Uh, I, there wasn't a gotcha moment. A lot of people saying this could be like after they had the footage, Tony Sh uh, Shivani was like on commentary, just like looking down, like embarrassed. A lot of people saying this could be AW's finger poker doom, or you know, um, having Tony Shivani read out the raw results. Okay, 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 hold on. Hmm. Did they get a rating from it? What's the rating? Did, did, did it pop a rating? Because that was their goal. All right, so last week they got about 770. Okay. Take this week, um, eight seventeen, eight twenty-seven. So next to nothing. No, yeah. And all they did was prove the other guy right. The other guy they're trying to embarrass and show that he's a punk. They show that oh, he's actually telling the truth. Yes. So they accomplished nothing but make themselves eight. look like a bunch of fucking marks. Yes. Way to go! I know. Tony Khan was quoted as saying after that incident that he's never felt threatened for his life and I never felt so scared in all my life. Uh, uh, after that? You were scared for your life after fucking that? Jesus Christ! What the fuck? Where did you grow up? Uh, well, we, we, we oh, know well, well, we know the families come from. Do you think Tony Khan's ever been in a fight or ever been put in a threatening position but scared for your life he would be scared in his life he's never been put in that position it, it lasted like half a fucking second it was i know i know i know but you this is the lifestyle he's come from if we oh, know this my god listen i once compared tony khan to jim barnett i was absolutely right tony you need some muscle you need to stay away and bring someone who knows what the fuck they're doing in. You got to get rid of some cancers. 
because you got some more in your locker room. I'm not going to name names, but they're there. Mm. And you, you got to do it quick because the longer you do this, the more money you're going to lose and the more dumb you're going to look. I'm just giving you some free advice, pal. Keep going. People, so you can, a lot of the people, for example, who was taking AEW side in this is people you know has never been in a the fight. They was like, oh my God, Punk assaulted him. I'm like, that's nothing. And then we, there was actually people who brought up your incident with Hardcore Holly. They say, if you want to hear about a fucking incident, look what Bob Holly done to Renee over a fucking parking ticket. People's defending you. Like, that's something. This is nothing. Like, literally had him in a hood for like three or four seconds. Now, I'm not saying I'm big a big fighter. I've done boxing in the past, but I've been in a few scraps. That was nothing. That's child's play. Okay. Um, um, I'm done talking about it. Just, just let's next subject. Come on. Um, right. So the other thing that happened that night, before we get to the ratings, uh, Will Ospreay. Yes. So over WrestleMania weekend, um, I mentioned it before, Triple H made some passive comments saying some wrestlers we tried to sign didn't want to do the grind and wanted the lighter schedule. So people put two and two together and they said, right, he's talking about Will Ospreay because they were in talks. So Will Ospreay cut a promo on Dynamite base, and he put, called out Triple H by name, basically. Um, saying the only reason you got where you are because he was grinding the boss's daughter. Wow. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. There was one person I felt sorry for in the segment, and that was uh, Renee Young, uh, John Moxley's wife, because she was next to him holding the microphone, and uh, apparently she's still like really good friends with Stephanie and like a lot of the girls in WWE. Okay. And All she's right. just like got her head down, like no just shit. In yeah, no, just like yeah. embarrassed to be there. I felt so sorry for her. And he was saying, I'm not scared of the grind, bro. Who's got that? Now, there was an interview <laughs> when Osprey signed for AEW. And one and, he, and this is coming out of his own words, and I'm paraphrasing it. This is coming out of his own mouth, sorry. One of the reasons he picked AEW was because of the lighter schedule. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. No. Um, okay. Keep going. More, more, more stuff has come out. So the reason he wants to do the promo. So he's, uh, I guess he's with a um, a wrestling star from the UK, uh, Alex Winder, uh, Windsor. Um, I think she was actually uh, married to another wrestler. Uh, I think it was he used to be pals with Osprey, but I think he passed away. I'm not sure on that, but someone said that to me. But so basically, yeah, uh, she's got a son. And Will Ospreay said, the reason that I don't want to move to America because me partner and their son lives in the UK and I don't want to move them to America. And I made that clear to WWE, but WWE was insistent on us moving to America. But he said she wants to stay with her family. So that's so according to him, or from what I've read there, that's one of the reasons why he decided to go to AW and not WWE because he does fly out from the uk to america and back again every week wow every that's what week every week <sighs> number one that must be a hell of a fucking flight ticket because i'm sure he wants business a couple of grand at least at least yeah and then the jet lag and then just the wow um, I can see him not wanting to live in the United States. Um, nothing against the United States, but I'd rather live home is home. And that, personally, this is my home. So I understand that from him. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. And you got to watch what you say because it comes back to haunt you, right? Because, you know, I, he gets offended because he probably took it like the way Hunter said it, like, accusing him of being lazy hmm. you know what i mean and it's like no i'm not freaking lazy it's just you know uh oh <sighs> the guy's a hell of a talent um but yeah you gotta watch what you say because it comes back to haunt you man it comes back to bite you in the ass right 
I'll probably be guilty of that too someday, but yeah, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm gonna true. I'm gonna have to like call you up on it sometimes next time. Right. Like, okay, when yeah. I slow down well, a little bit. Yeah. Um but yeah, like you said, he's a hell of a talent. Um a yes. little bit emotional. Um but yeah, he has to be careful because the re- I don't want AW go out of business. I don't because it's a Fuck place no. for rest- there's a place Fuck for wrestlers no. get paid and get paid really well. I just want them to be better. But the rate no. they're going is not looking good. And it's, you're just wasting might- money, Tony. Jesus Christ. I wish I could just sit down with you, just fucking one on one for just two hours, have dinner with them. Mm. And just you know, just have dinner. That's it. I don't want anything from them. Just sit and talk with them and then fucking sit back. You know what I mean? Because uh, that, that's the thing. I was with the WWE when there was one company it was monopolized. It fucking sucked. Yes. And guess what? As soon as TNA started spending money, look at all the guys that, that left. Right off the bat, RVD, Booker T, Kurt Angle, Duds. Chris, Christian. Christian. As soon yeah. as there was another company that was starting to pay a little bit of money, look at everybody jump ship. Yeah. Everybody. What does that tell you? Do we ain't paying as much as they should be? <laughs> no, is that when there's only one company, they'll take advantage of you and oh yeah, sorry, work yeah. you and treat yeah. you like any way they want, which is usually like shit. Yeah, and they can get away with it. And like, as for me, just being a wrestling fan, one of the reasons I'm thankful for AEW, WWE has actually raised their game. Because I'm not like Renee. Before we started in the podcast, you didn't watch WWE, but honestly, those years like 2018 to 2021 were fucking dire as a WWE now you know fan. Why I didn't watch. Now you know. Yeah, that was honestly, shit, was there, it was terrible. Like Roman Reigns being covered in dog food. I'm not making this up. <laughs> fucking the Usos and the Revival FTR having a feud. So fucking the Usos put like itching powder in like the shampoo <laughs> and you got you see video and you see backstage footage of the revival shaving each other's backs and shit okay i think i saw a clip on facebook of that yeah yeah and shorty g <laughs> so um so yeah i am thankful for aw i just want it to be better as simple as that as a wrestling fan yeah. i want it to be better tony tony please name a time and place let's sit and have dinner there's two hours of your time man it won't cost you a fucking dime. Just let's have some sushi if you like sushi. I love sushi. Yeah. Just let me talk to you for two fucking hours, bro. Yeah. Fuck. So, with that said, we'll get to the AW ratings. Okay. So, um, right. Well, let's get started. So, let's see here. All right. 8 p.m. So, first segment Samoa Joe, Swerf, Strickland, Ramp, Angle. Followed by the start of Adam Copeland versus uh, Penta L Zero through picture and picture ads, nine hundred and eighty one thousand. Mm. So That's about where they normally that. start. Is that better than last week? A little bit. It's a little bit, but it's where they normally start. Like them right. high nine hundreds, touch them in. Like I said before, there is the Big Bang Theory like overrun. What helps it? Right. Okay. Right. Segment two. So this is really the true indicator. And there is a trend in line as well. So at the minute, we're bang in line with the trend in line from last week. A continuation of Adam Copeland and Penta L Zero through picture and picture ads. This is the 815 to 830, 857,000. Oh, damn. So right off the bat, they lose over 100,000. Yeah, over 120,000. Okay. Right. Next segment 830 to 845. Uh, the post match with Brody King, Julia Hart, Willow Nightingale, uh, Lion Hook, Shibata, backstage promo, ad break, uh, Briscoe, Eddie Kingston, Copeland, Nightingale, Stokely Halfway backstage. Uh, the main one is Young Bucks airing the uh, backstage footage from all in. So, this is the big high spot of the night, right? Right. 880,000. 23,000 more they got from the last segment. Whippity do! It's it's a slightly above the trend in line from last week, but not by much. Keep going. The other thing before we get on, 
eight thirty to eight forty five. If this is gonna be your big angle of the week, wouldn't you start the show with it or the top of the hour with it? Mm, good question. It's a very, very good question. Definitely mention it, tease it. Mm. Right? I don't, they coming probably up, teased it. Yeah. Did they tease it? They probably did tease it, but me personally, yeah, this watch, is what watch the show. I know. Like, well, I don't watch it, but I would imagine they teased it. But this is what they've been fucking, you know, promoting. You would start the show with it. So anyway, okay. next segment, 8 45 to 9 p.m. Uh, so FTR done the live reaction to it, uh, followed by a brand new Danielson video and then the uh, Will Ospreay promo, which I mentioned previously. Uh, we're back down to 822,000. Jesus Christ. So that was, a, it went up to 880, now down to 820? Yeah, so it's lost um, 60,000. About 60,000, yeah. 58,000. Because I know some sticklers in the chat is like, we can't do maths. <laughs> Right, right. How was how was people chat? How was Osprey on the mic? Did you hear him, James? To be fair, I like Osprey on the mic. I think he's a good on the mic. And he's he's whoa, 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 whoa. You're a UK boy. I can understand him. <laughs> yeah. Chat, Americans, North Americans. How is he on the mic? What does he come across as? He was a big James. This is serious here. I lived in the United States. Hmm. As soon as an American hears an accent, especially when you go down that uh, Mason Dixon line, Daddy, he talk funny. Where he from? <laughs> I'm telling you, I lived there, baby. I lived in Kentucky and I lived in Texas. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. They might say, "No, no, we've changed." We're not like, bullshit. Hmm. Y'all like that? I can talk Southern. That's right. Keep going. A uh, few people said they like him. Some can't understand him. Some's like, I don't understand uh, the bruv. That's just something we say to each other. Normally, if we go to a chicken shop, it's like, all right, bruv, or all right, boss man. Okay. So that... Someone right here said Neville can't understand a goddamn word he says. And that's oh, well, ne Neville's from fucking Newcastle. Okay. Brother, I, I struggle. Brother. He's a Jordy. <laughs> people from Newcastle can't understand him. <laughs> Oh, could be worse. I'm not, and this ain't disrespectful. I love Scottish people, but imagine if it's from Scotland. Oh, and I mean yeah. proper Scotland. Physical still. Physical still. Physical still. What the fuck? Fizzy or still? Okay, keep going. Yeah. Not Drew McIntyre, Scotland. I'm talking proper Scotland. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, that's fun. Uh, so, top of the hour, 9, 8, uh, 9 p.m. to 9.15. Uh, Julia Hart video, followed by Lion Hook versus uh, Katsuya Shibata, uh, <laughs> Shane Taylor promotions. Might it might be a uh, free tag team to get each other. Free picture and picture ads. Seven hundred sixty-seven thousand. Oh God! So damn. We're now below the trend in line from last week. Okay, how much is that down? That's a big jump there. Uh, about fifty-five. <laughs> Keep going. And that's the top of the hour. So normally that normally goes up. Yeah. That's not good. That's not good, boys and girls. Keep going. Right. Uh, next segment, 9.15, 9.30. Uh, Dustin Rhodes backstage promo, followed by Okada versus Cristiano Agento. No idea who that is. Post-match with Puck. Uh, Young Bucks, FTR, Bullet, Code, Bullet Club Gold backstage promo. Ad break, followed by Tony Storm, Thunder Rosa, and Diana Perrazzo ramp angle. We're down slightly, uh, 765, so only down 2,000 there. Okay, so it stays even pretty much. Yep. Okay. Um, next segment, 9.30 to 9.45. Anna J versus Mariah, uh, Mariah May through picture-in-picture picture ads, post-match with, you might know this girl, Mina Shirakawa. No, I don't. Well, I mean, the highlight of the match, after she made a save, her and uh, Mariah May started um, kissing in the ring. So, hell yeah. Yeah. Um, Mercedes Monet backstage promo followed it. We're down to 759,000. So we're down another 6,000. So not even lesbians can save the show. Okay, so you mean to tell me if I go on YouTube, Mariah May kissing other girl, 
I can see yeah. that. Yeah, and she's hot as well, both her. Where's that baby um, oil at? I got I got a this, um... break. Sorry everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we at? I've lost my train of thought. Anyway. Is he being serious? Yeah, it's on AW YouTube. Here we go. Let's see. You know, if I turn it into nine screens, I can probably like show it. That's what I should have done, man. So anyway, everyone in the chat, we'll, we'll get to the final bit. Scissor party, that's over in AEW. I'll be damned. That they, they, they need it to save the show. <laughs> and I'm not, and uh, we're not talking the flipping bang up bang scissor gang. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah. Oh man, there's those people chatting in the chat's like, thank you. So let's get to the final one. Um let's see, we're down to well, let's wait for him to come. So everyone in the chat, thank you for joining us. I'll do a quick plug. Uh so yeah, we've been the uh, numbers have been great lately. So yeah, if you could please uh hit the like button and subscribe and uh, <laughs> so uh Renee's come uh, you look oh, pushed. Shit. What okay, where are we at? Nine forty five to ten. Uh, yep, final second. So, uh, ad break followed by uh, Samoa Joe versus Dustin Rhodes. But so, because Cody Rhodes was in a world title match, they decided to put Dustin Rhodes in the title match this week. Of course, uh, I think it was anyway, it was against the champion. Uh, for picture and picture ads, post match with Swerve Strickland, slightly we're down again, 723. Wow. Oh, that's the whoa. And that that's what they ended with? No. Yes. Seven twenty three. So from the start, eight uh nine eighty one, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. To seven twenty three. Yes. Over a quarter mil. So Tony Khan, his um response to the so they were slight so they was up twenty nine percent from last week. So look the rating. Now this is with promoting the shit out of this backstage film, which didn't do much. Tony Khan traded after the show. Just got I don't know if he's actually being serious. Just got the great news from TBS Network. Last week uh, last night's Wednesday night dynamite up twenty nine percent from last week, plus up seventeen over the prior six week average. Thank you all watching AEW Wednesday. See you at a stacked TBS wrestling show Wednesday in Indy, plus Rampage and Collision, blah, 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 blah. So each draw this week was someone who wasn't there, and it didn't even do that much of an increase in the rating. And he's, he's happy about it. And basically, everybody's... Kind of laughing at the whole thing, making fun of them. Yeah. Oh, Tony, just give me two hours, Tony, please. Two hours. It won't cost you a dime. Just a little bit of time. Oh, you didn't pay for the fucking sushi. So, right? I got a rich daddy, too. Tony. Do you know how many people was in attendance that night? Oh, Jesus Christ. They've been having for what, 3,000? Yeah, about that. Yeah. Okay. The the setup was for thirty three hundred. Um, a few hours before, and they sold twenty nine hundred. So, about three thousand tickets. The ticket prices was from twenty dollars to ninety dollars. So another loser. The, that, the last time, yeah, yeah that, this was in the uh, chal- that barely pays the building rent, if that. Uh. That was in uh, that's for two shows for Dynamite and Rampage. So after Dynamite, they record Rampage. Okay. It was in uh, Charleston, West, Vir- uh, West Virginia. The last time they was there, um, just under two years ago, they drew forty one hundred. So their attendances is down as well. Well, usually the second time around they do about half, so they're above that. So that's not so bad. I would think right. they would do like two thousand. But they did above average for around three thousand. But yeah, you can't go to a place like Virginia, West Virginia, and 
get five hundred dollars a ticket. No, the people can't afford it. Twenty bucks is a lot of money over there. You know what I mean? Um, okay, well, Tony needs help, and I'm willing to help him. Let's get this to chats. Yeah. How are all y'all doing? Did Renee see the old WWE article pics I sent you, James? Thought he'd get a kick out of it. Rest in peace. Oh, it was you, Jared. Thank you. Seemed like a great guy. Any insight on the origins of him starting Sumo? Take care, guys. Um, where are these pics that you speak of? No, the ones I sent you. So, uh, <laughs> Dr. Guerrero. So, uh, I didn't realize that was Jared. So, that, the, the pictures I sent you came from Jared for an email. So, thank you, Jared. What, what pictures were that? Of you and Aki. Oh, thank you so much, Jared. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I can show the people actually what we're talking about that would help. Make yeah, Jared. Up. And uh, you, you sent a video, but I don't know why. I just can't seem to be able to download it for some bizarre reason. Uh, but I'll try and do it again later on. I'm sure it'll be fun. But yeah, thank you for that, Jared. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much for that. So. Oh. There we go. Bit so that was the press conference, Miyanaki Bono in All Japan Pro Wrestling was before, I believe, a tag league. Mm. If I'm not mistaken, that might be the tag league right before Alliance had passed away, right before like he was supposed to make that trip and do the tag league with me. Oh, you said yeah. Yeah. Now two of the brothers are gone. Hold on. Here's another picture. Um, see, when we were in Hustle... That's me and Lance Cade versus Aki Bono and Koshinaka. We were the Texas Napoleons. Um, fuck. So, sorry, guys. Like, yeah, you look at these pictures and all of a sudden all these memories come back to you. You know what I mean? It's like. I can imagine. Fuck. Um, I get like that when I see pictures of my. Uh... My grandfather, uh, me, mother's father, he passed away when I was like, uh, funerals day after like my 13th birthday. So whenever I see old photos of him, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, his origins in sumo, that was another part of the question. Yeah, like he was 18. He came over from, I believe, Hawaii. And he moved into the dojos. And yeah. Uh, you guys need to watch long of Rolando Jordan versus Alt Yeah, we're going to yeah. do that. Actually, I think this week we might. Okay, what was the? the I wanted to so, do WrestleMania Nine, the uh, Head Shrinkers versus the Steiners. And you wanted to do Harry Von Eric free Jerry Lawler, I believe. Yeah, from Mid South, or no, no, from Memphis. Yeah, I'll tell you another match. I watched it today actually, and it's one that I bet you haven't watched for a long time. Uh, Bulldog and Owen for, for the European title in Germany. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, that's a good match. Okay. Well, we'll definitely add that to the list along with Lauren of Jordan Ultimate Warrior. I think I've seen a little bit of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Spain, I believe. What do you lads think the future of WWE looks like? And will Cody be a good champion? Date, date. Um, I think he's going to give it his all. I think um, he takes it serious. Uh, I think the promotion is behind him. I think the son-in-law is behind him. Um... It looks good. It really does look good. I just wish AEW would just quit being acting like a bunch of fucking marks. Sorry, guys. To... Sorry, but it's true. Fuck. Do you want me to tell you an interesting number for Mania Weekend for Cody? Go ahead. Apparently, he sold over a million dollars worth of merchandise over WrestleMania Weekend. There you go. Like, so... there and obviously on the website as well. But like apparently that was the number, so he's over. It's nice royalty check off that. Did you guys hear what Ryback had to say about Punk making him look like the bad guy out of it all? Love y'all's. No, I didn't. I try to ignore Ryback. <laughs> Yo, this is the big guy Ryback. <laughs> I need Jason to do Ryback. Jason would do it perfect. But like, what's up, guys? This is Ryback. You yeah, got you gotta job. elaborate. You gotta specify what exactly did he say. He just calls him fragile Phil. Like that's why he calls him. He calls him fragile Phil because right back down the end of his career. <laughs> that's probably why. <laughs> right back, you're welcome to come on. 
I had a few drinks. Looked forward to a show. Looking good, Renee and Jamie. Rex, you're the man, brother. We love you and never change. Renee, has James filled you in the latest drama with Zelina Vega involving artists? Yes. Ooh. What's going on? So um, I haven't. Um, thank you for that, Rex. Um, I haven't read everything that happened. So basically, Selena Vega, she's really big into cosplay. So it's when people dress up as, say, video game characters, comic book characters, TV characters, film characters, etc. Right. So whenever she does like an entrance for, say, a big show, she normally comes out with like big wings or you know, like a, a video game character. So there was this company, and apparently they said they made stuff for her. And she, they said that she didn't pay them f uh, for the stuff. So she came with receipts. Now, she's off Twitter, but she went back on Twitter. She's married to Alistair Black. Uh, he's yeah, big yeah. into gaming as well. And she came with receipts basically saying, no, I didn't rip this, these people off. I forgot what I said exactly, but basically it showed that she was innocent of what was said. Wow. So the, what are they trying to do? Make her look bad or get more money? or? I guess so. Like, I think she might be getting some free stuff as well. Um, but I think some of the free stuff they sent her, they wanted her to fend pay for that stuff. Something like that. Or probably. Yeah, I need to look more into it, but uh, but it but that's the gist of it, basically. I might be wrong, but that, to me, that was the gist of it from what I've seen and what I've heard. You want drama? Just add money. Do you think WWE about it? Anything is possible. I hope not, but anything is possible. Bonjour. Where's Paul? He'll be here shortly. Twenty about twenty minutes or thirty. Twenty to thirty minutes, give or take. Can AEW recover if Tony sniff sniff steps down? Yes. Yes. Uh, he needs to take a step back. He can be the money guy, but he's got to get somebody in there who does not want to be the fucking center of attention, doesn't want to book himself on television, wants to fucking take control, is not scared to get in the wrestler's faces if need be and be a professional and treat Tony's money like his own. This, that's the same exact thing happened with TNA because... Obviously, it was Jeff who started it, but then the, the Carters came into it. And Dixie Carter, you never did see her. She was always, like, backstage. And she would let Russo book the show or Dutch or Cornette, etc. But then she started making the odd couple appearances, and then she started being more and more on screen. Then when she brought in Hogan and Bischoff, she was always on screen. And that eventually led to the downfall. She got a taste of the limelight and thought she was a star. That's it. Rand James, do you see Triple H purchase AEW? Anything can happen. AEW only fans. <laughs> Did you say, so what was your thoughts on the footage? Should we do a watch along for that? For what? <laughs> the uh, Mariah May. <laughs> and uh, the uh, Japanese. I'll watch, I'll watch that along by myself tonight. <laughs> I feared for my life of Tony Khan's booking. Oh. Oh, Rex. Okay. Well, How long until AEW's drop into a hundred thousand or below? Well, let's hope not. But I mean, it showed you the difference. That's why we That's why AEW shouldn't be in competition with WWE. They should aspire to be like WWE. Mm. We broke down the ratings for WWE Raw the other day, and Raw's not as popular as SmackDown these days. But obviously, at one point, it was three point three million, give or take. By the end, they dropped down to 200. So they dropped 1.2 million fans during the show, and it's still nearly three times as much as what Dynamite gets. Yeah. That's the difference. That's the difference. What's your opinion on Linda being at Hall of Fame, not with Triple H and Steph, and find it awkward considering Steph alleged cover of Ashley? She opened night two. What? I thought Linda... I might be wrong, but I thought I saw a picture of Linda with Stephanie and Charlotte Flair. At the Hall of Fame? I don't know if at the Hall of Fame, but over the weekend. I might be wrong, but I'm sure... I know she had a picture with Charlotte, but I'm sure Stephanie was in the picture with her. I couldn't tell you, buddy. I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Nothing. yeah, people. Yeah, people saying here, angry mama. Thank you, Steph and Linda did take a picture at the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, Charlotte was in like another one with them. Yeah. Most underrated Brett Matt 
that's yours, James. Thank you. The one with Skinner at this Tuesday in Texas is a decent match. Um, okay, just one. Don't have to give him his whole fucking. Uh, what was working with Undertaker like? Uh, scary uh, or intimidating, and then it was fine the second and third and fourth time. But the first time was intimidating. Uh, thank you for the donation, Ben. Uh, you should get Ryback on. People act like he's bitter, but he called the WWE being sold in a public scandal involving Vince McMahon before anybody else. Well, that is true. That is true. But it's just that, like, okay, yeah, he does call that, but then he also says, I'm Ryback, and I'm going to be a WWE. Yeah, so you come across as a fucking idiot. Sorry, dude, you do. Someone needs to tell you, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Renee Dupree. What the fuck? You gonna take me serious? That, no, you gonna a, think you're just a fucking idiot. There's a thing. It's called being humble. Yeah, it's, like, fuck. You know, we all get things right and we all get things wrong. Okay, and I've probably got more things wrong on this podcast than anyone else. And I own up to it. I'm like, yes, I was wrong, everyone. But yeah, it's called being humble. It's a great thing. So I also want to ask a burning question. Don't need to answer if not comfortable. But Eddie Guerrero didn't pass away in 05. Would Chris been on tragedy have ever happened? No, I don't believe it would have. No, it absolutely not. Nope. Beer time. Cheers, fellas. All right, Cody. Drink some beer. Deep, deep. Yeah. Um, so it's about 7.41. T minus 12, 19 minutes before Paul London touches down. Well, you have to understand, though, he's on an airplane. So you can always give or take five minutes in the air. And you get to land. And who knows how long it takes him to get off the plane. And then he's got to find a connection. So, I mean, he will be here. But just be patient. Is everybody having fun? I noticed that the numbers have just grown. We're over 400. Thank you very much. Oh, this. thank you. Yeah. So uh, I have a fun story today. And uh, and this is to any parents uh, in the chat. If you think, if you agree with me, hit like, subscribe, or just put on, yeah, James is right. Do you want know to Do you know what's the biggest oh fuck as a parent? I don't know. So this happens if you've got a child between three and six years old, and it's about five p.m. And when you turn your head and you look at them and they're asleep, that's oh fuck. Do you know why? Because you know that little bastard's could be up to about twelve o'clock. <laughs> So if people in the chat agrees with me, hit that fucking like button. <laughs> and because that's exactly what happened to me today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Renee, are you wrestling in Nova Scotia this summer? Yeah, man. May 5th, I will be in Barrington Passage. Um, and uh, yeah, it's still early in the year. Usually, you know, I'm doing track at US New Brunswick, May 25th. And then the promoter said, man, we want more dates for you. We want you to come more and more and more. So, but guaranteed uh, May 5th in Barrington Passage, Nova Scotia, I am booked. Um, any Steve Kern stories? He helped train a lot of folks back in the FCW days. Thanks. I love Steve Kern. Me and Steve Kern got along great. Um, there's the story of me and Paul wrestling each other, and Steve Kern was the agent with. Um, Sergeant Slaughter, and they're like, come on, guys, we need you to go. Like, the show is running long. We need you guys to go quick, and you do it in fucking two minutes. I said, I can do it in 30 fucking seconds. And then uh, me and Paul look at each other. And I think I'm the one that came up with it. Dude, let's do WrestleMania 8, Skinner and Owen. And then it's like, okay. And he knew already knew what I was talking about, so we did that exact same fucking match. O'Connor roll, one, two, three, boom, I get up. I have my robe still on, so it goes over my head. And yeah. I'm, like, trying to, like, shadow box, and where the fuck is he? Boom, boom, boom. And we get to the back. He's popping huge. He's, like, boom. Guess who comes up to me? Bob fucking Holly. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, you're on your way out. Like, no, I'm not, you fucking mark. Uh, at that moment, I realized this guy, like, seriously, like, I was told by Taker, mm. Vince, Pat, Stephanie, Renee, you're here for the long term. Then, you know, I would look over at him and realize, is this my future? Am I going to be this guy? Yeah. And I thought, there's yeah. no there's no way I want to live my life like, you know, like this guy. Miserable, 
paranoid, jealous. Like, no, that's not going to be my life. You know, so thank you very much for being around because you made me realize that, uh, that you know, oh, God, what a miserable, miserable man. Keep going. Do right. you know what? I would like to read his book. Just like an idea, but I, I was just thinking there, how long was he there for? Because he joined 93, 94, I believe. Mm, yeah, a 14 year run, I believe. He was there for WrestleMania 10. WrestleMania 10 was 94. So he was there before then. And he finished up 2009, maybe? 2008, 2009? Mm. So he was there for like a good 15 years. Got caught stealing, didn't you, buddy? Hmm? Yeah, Robert, got caught stealing. Oh, hello. I don't even have kids. My friend's newborn is up all night because he lets it sleep too early. I told him not to do that. It's a big no no. Yeah, right. (laughs) I mean, sometimes it can't be helped. Sometimes, you know, you're, you're driving back, and if the heaters are on, like even me, I just falls asleep if the heaters is on, and you're just like, oh, shit. So you try and wind the windows down. <laughs> like, come mm. I'm a terrible parent. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ashley. We appreciate you so much. Uh, Tommy Seville, new listener. Tamagawi, Ontario, Canada. Will Renee wrestle Ontario this year? Yes, I will. I'll be there in Napanee. Napanee, Ontario, on June 29th. Let me see if that's the right name of the town. Um, Tamagami. That'd be for Great North Wrestling. I'll be returning. Uh, I found an interesting story today. Developing mm-hmm. Vietnam just sentenced a real estate agent, Troing Mayan, a uh, lady. They've just sentenced her to death by execution for stealing $12 billion. Wow. They don't fuck around there, do they? <laughs> yep. To answer your question, Tommy, Napanee, Ontario, Saturday, June 29th. Oh, well. Fuck, why is that so goddamn blurry? It's because your background's blurry. Hold on a second. I'm going to fix this so everybody can see what the fuck I'm showing you. Sorry. There we go. There. June 29th. That's great. Oh, Paul, Paul Roma is going to be on the card. Uh, what's that guy we had on the card here? Um, Mario Mancini? Yes. He's going to be on the card. Oh, that'd be good. I will be there. I'm wrestling... Uh, uh, I'm not sure who I'm wrestling. And uh, Silesia Sparks will be there. Hell yeah. Lovely Silesia. So, yes, uh, Tommy. Well, what? Um, no, uh, so one of the news that's happening tonight, apparently we might see a fresh debut on the uh, SmackDown. So, Tamatonga apparently signed with WWE, and he's been spotted uh, in the city where they are in SmackDown tonight. And there's rumors he could be the new member of the bloodline. So uh Tamatonga, he's been in Japan since I can remember. Uh thoughts that's on him. Haku. That's Haku's son, right? That's right. Yeah. So um what's your thoughts on that possibly happening and him making the leap to WWE? Holy Christ, how many Samoans or Islanders do they have in that fucking I don't know. <laughs> fuck half the rosters from the islands, right? But they're great workers, all of them. They can all go. Yeah. They know what they're doing. So um, I think it would be very good. Very good. His time spent in Japan is definitely going to help him out. He might Usos might learn how to fucking have a Japanese match now instead of just trying to copy it <laughs> by watching. But that would, So <laughs> I don't go by uh, Meltzer ratings, but I just go by general sight watching it. Yeah, and but everyone, the majority said that was the worst match over Mania weekend. They said the worst, and I hit like I said, I hate the dog and I do it. They said the worst match Mania weekend was the most AEW type match. The Usos spamming super kicks and shit. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, Rex. Hope you and Slayer are back on good terms. When are you coming back to Ireland to perform? Um, listen, man, I spent years and years and years going overseas. 15 or 16 to be exact. 
um, it won't be for a very, very long time. Like when I finally decide, okay, one last trip around the sun before I hang them up and you know what I mean? So maybe you're looking at 10 years, pal. Like I got a business to run right now. My father just passed away in September and I'm really taking over the business. And when you got 14 buildings, about 38 units to take care of, it's, you know, that's my main priority right now. You know, wrestling is just a, a side hustle, you know. I love it. I always will. But as far as doing it full time and relying on it, and those days are long gone now, you know. Um, yeah. Um, well, one of the big news, not wrestling related, but uh, OJ Simpson dying. Oh, 70, fuck, 78? Yeah. Mm. Did you say it, exactly allegedly. what he died of? Uh, I think it might have been cancer. He had cancer? Someone thinks so. Someone in the chat might uh, correct me if you can, please do so. But I think it was cancer. I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was cancer. Everyone's saying, yeah. What, 76? 76. Wow. Well, don't know. Don't know where he's headed. I mean, he, he got proven innocent, right? Well, he was <laughs> he, he was found innocent. <laughs> yeah. Proven's a very strong word. If the glove don't fit, you must have quit. Well, <laughs> Never forget. A, Dude, that was on the fucking TV, CNN, nonstop when I was growing up. I remember coming home from school, my mom just glued to the TV. O.J. Yeah. Simpson child. O.J. Simpson child. I mean, it's such a coincidence he stopped taking these uh, tablets, um, these arthritis tablets, you know what? made his hands swelled up as well. I mean, it's a total coincidence. <laughs> but he stopped taking his medication before that. Um, yeah. Did you ever watch, and I recommend it, did you ever watch OJ Simpson versus the people that uh, Cuba Gooden Jr. played OJ? No. Oh, man, please, you're going to watch it. So Cuba it Gooden, good? yeah. Um, so I think it's like four or five episodes, maybe six episodes. Cuba Gooden Jr. plays OJ. Um do you remember Friends? Uh, Ross? Yeah. Uh, David Trimmer. He played um, Rob, Ka is it Rob Kardashian, I think his name was. Um, you know the, the Kardashians? Lawyers. That's one of the lawyers, right? Yeah, he was good, best friends with OJ, and he was one of his lawyers. Uh, John Travolta plays one of the lawyers. Um, wow. But yeah, no, real good. Um, yeah, good movie. Uh, good TV, show, uh, TV series. And it, I tell you what it is. It doesn't paint him as guilty, but it doesn't paint him as innocent at the same time. It's okay. kind of left to interpretation from the viewer. Okay, okay. And I, like, it's, I just go and watch it. It's good. <laughs> OJ, okay, OJ watch it. The people. Just watch it. Okay. I No, that actually sounds pretty good. Um, yeah. Is it on Netflix now, you know, or if I YouTube it? or well, That's a good app. That's a good question. I forgot if I watch it on Netflix, because your Netflix is different to my Netflix, you see. Mm, it's true. I have so, Amazon and Netflix. Those are the two. I have Paramount too for South Park. Oh, I was, yeah, I was thinking of getting Paramount to be honest because of South Park. <laughs> South Park. That's the only reason why. The wife saw yeah. it. She's like, we're getting it. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of getting Paramount as well to be honest. I think I might because I cancelled Disney because Disney's terrible now. So I might Is get. It? Yeah, it? I might get Paramount instead now. Okay, just a sec. Tony just found the channel a few weeks ago. Really appreciate the everyone puts in uh, effort. Everyone puts in and keep it. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Um, we appreciate all our new subscribers, young and old. Um, yeah, we're just being ourselves and calling it like we see it, and hopefully you're entertained. Um, Paul um, London should be arriving within the next ten to twenty minutes. Uh, did you have? I have to go back to the bathroom, dude. Like, okay, this yeah. is my this is my fourth. Tim Hortons extra large coffee today. Okay. I've black or white? Black. It don't matter if you're black or white. Um, <laughs> Haven't you seen on airplane? You want some cream in your coffee? No. It's like it's eight year old girl. No. I like my coffee black. I like my men. <laughs> <laughs> like, if it's got Leslie Nielsen in, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. He's Canadian, you know. Oh, yeah, man. 
I think he's the most famous Canadian. He's fucking hilarious. He's your most awesome Canadian. Yeah, right. Um, No, we had all kinds. We had Michael J. Fox. We had Terry Fox. Michael J. Fox, Canadian. Fuck yeah. Well, man, I learn learn something new every day. John Candy was Canadian. Oh, yeah, yeah. John Candy. Like, great. Uh, um, Dumb and Dumber. Jim Carrey is Canadian. He doesn't seem Canadian. Now you're gonna say to me, "What the fuck?" You're gonna say to me, "What the fuck does that mean?" What, <laughs> does that? Say, what the fuck are you talking about, motherfucker? Yeah, Jim Carrey is fucking Canadian, dude. I don't know. I'm just a mark for Le- Leslie Nielsen. Okay. <laughs> oh, he was fucking great. Just awesome. Well, he, he, he done WWF, didn't he? Do you remember when they were searching for the Undertaker? It was like 95, 94. So what was that SummerSlam Maybe. or something? Yeah, it was it was leading up to Taker versus Under Faker. It was like Brian Lee. Right, right. And Leslie Nielsen was filming these skits and you just kept seeing like Taker in the background and Nielsen's <laughs> looking for him everywhere. <laughs> Apparently, Bruce Richard said he um it, that was his favorite celebrity to work with. He said he was a joy. He said that's my favorite celebrity I've ever worked with. I can imagine him just being naturally funny, right? He's- Okay, let me go to the bathroom here. Bring up some statistics so that people can, you know, talk to you. Yeah. Pam Landerson. She Canadian. Pam Landerson, Canadian. Look, man, I'm learning all about Canada. And I like Canada. Um, so yeah, let's uh, see if I've got any news. Oh, so more news here, everyone. Apparently, Hook is um exploring his options when his contract runs up. So um that would be interesting. I can't say I'm the biggest fan of Hook. Um, I think he needs to put some size on because I don't know how toy is, but he looks small. And like, if you didn't say to me that was Taz's kid, I wouldn't think that was Taz's kid. Like, there is no similarity between the two at all. But apparently, that's something that's uh, potentially happening. Um, besides that, that's pretty much it. I think uh, Mero has given an update um, saying he's going to come back stronger than ever. And also single. Um, man, you know, uh, I was uh, talking to the Discord. Uh, we've got the Discord group on the Patreon, everyone. Please, if you're interested, please subscribe. And thank you to all our new Patreon subscribers we've had. It's been great. And obviously all the subscribers on YouTube. But Mero, is there anyone who's lost more than Mero? <laughs> now, obviously, I know Brian uh, Brody Lee passed away, sadly, obviously. But, you know, without that, Mero joined AW. Lost his push, lost his wife, and now he's always injured. Like he's been cursed since he's joined AEW. Miro. Miro. Apparently, he's ex now. She's with Damian Priest, so she's traded Miro in for a world champion. Listen, dude. Me, you know who I had this conversation with? Gilberg. Right. Absolutely right. I said, What's your thoughts on dating in the business? And he called it like it is guaranteed heartbreak. And that's exactly what it is. Guaranteed heartbreak. I went through one breakup in my life. And it almost killed me. I don't take those very well at all. Wow. Oh, yeah. Almost killed me. Okay. So, no thank you. Is it tempting? Fuck you. Yeah. Have you looked on TV? Have you seen the girls that are in the business now? You're goddamn right it's tempting. But like they teach in the Bible. Lead us not to temptation. Yep. What do we got here, yep. James? I've got a funny video for you. You'll you'll enjoy this one. Girlfriend mistreats me in front of my mm-hmm. girlfriend's parents. Baby, huh? can I eat? Yeah, eat. Here, baby. I love you. <laughs> Why are you eating, Michelle? Yeah. No, I always have to eat her leftovers. That's what she said before I. No. This one. What? Really? Look at the dog as she stares at him now. Of course, this is not the end of it. Baby, there's your tea after the dinner. Huh? Take the mother. She told me that I need to kneel down to do everything for her. Where does it? That's a rule of the relationship. Come over. We need to talk. I'm carrying. Come! I look like Singapore. The tea tastes so good. <sighs> Who's this fucking idiot? Well, it must be YouTube. He's got a gold plaque in the background, so he must be doing well. 
Wow, yeah, he must be. Gold. I saw it say it made me laugh. Uh, let's see. Um, Hold on a second. Got... Most iconic fictional Canadian, I'd say Wolverine. Wolverine. His name is James Hewitt. Wolverine. Hey, James, where are you from? The accent is unique. Also, where is Osprey from? I have to listen carefully to understand him. Fave UK wrestler. I don't know where from? Osprey's from. Where are you from, James? All over, literally. Uh, no, so, uh, born in Nottingham. Uh, but I've told the story. My family were antique dealers. So growing up, I would travel all over the UK and across Europe to like uh, fairs and markets and stuff. So I just picked up all these different accents. None of the language, especially in Europe. But I just picked up all these weird language because I've been working really since I've been like seven or eight year old. So um, they would like after school during summer holidays, they would like trick me in the van. We'd be doing like 12, 13, 14 hour drives. And uh, I just picked up all these weird accents. So um, that's for, that's it. So I'm from the East Midlands. But uh, Osprey must be from near London. But well, he sounds doesn't sound like he's from Birmingham. Know, he's got weird because he says bruv. But, um, it's definitely not Liverpool. It's definitely not Liverpool. <laughs> I, I love Liverpool football. Liverpool. Club. Liverpool. What's it, what's it, what's it, Liverpool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Sorry. Liverpool. <laughs> so I love Liverpool, but I cannot stand the accent at all. Um, and I love Liverpool. Let's see. Where the fuck is he born? Havering? It must be some little posh area. Okay. Who is your favorite UK wrestler? Oh, sorry. Uh, I mean, it's got to be Bulldog. Davey Boy. Yeah, it's going to be Bulldog. I mean, don't run big fan McIntyre, Regal, and stuff, and Dynamite. People would probably say Dynamite, but I grew up watching WWF. To me, it was Bulldog. He was my guy. Big boy. Him and Brett. Yeah. Okay, what else you got here, Jameson? Let's see. Oh, Just so... waiting on uh, Paul London, everyone. He should be landing very shortly. In the meantime, James, what do you got? So there was news that came out. Uh, the reboot in the Scary Movie franchise. Dude, I heard! It's the producers of Sonic the Hedgehog? So it is, yeah, Paramount, yeah. Brother, I am so there. I am there in the theater with a big bag of popcorn watching that shit. Which one's your favorite? When they were in the mansion, remember the haunted mansion? The guy had the weird the hand. <laughs> and, he, and there's the other guy in the wheelchair. Let me just give you a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the bigger man and just walk, walk away. away. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's a clip from uh, the first one. So I've uh, I've mirrored it. So hopefully we don't get copyrighted. If not, if we do, I'll just uh, trim out the episodes. Okay. Uh, let's see. There we go. Loved me. Oh, I did, baby. I did. But abstinence will make you discover new things about yourself. That's right, Cindy. I'm gay. And in case you haven't noticed, so is Ray. <laughs> What? <laughs> I ain't gay. What are you talking about? You took it to that club. So they play good music. What about our trip to San Francisco then? I wanted to go shopping. But you you made love to me. No, ho, ho. first of all, you suck my Whatever, Ray, <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's funny. Fun fact. The guy there and Paul was actually in the same movie, and I bet Paul doesn't realize that. What guy? The guy who played the boyfriend. Not Ray, the other one. I forgot the character's name in it. For real? What movie yeah. was he in? So he was an extra as well. So he's, he's been in a couple of movies. He was in the Meet the Parents as well with um, still <coughs> in, uh, fucking De Niro. He played the son. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. Paul done the movie, The Faculty. I think this was like 1998, uh, okay. late 90s. So Paul's an extra. You see him in a couple of uh, spots. So there's this guy who at the front of the school is always arguing with his uh, girlfriend. Then like a few days later, him and his girlfriend just sit there being best friends and shit. Well, it's actually him. So him and Paul technically is in the same movie, even though both of them was actor, uh, extras. Right. Okay. So I bet Paul doesn't even know about that. Not sure. Yeah. Let's see what else I got here. Uh, uh, that one I'm going to save for Paul because he said, "Have you got any of the uh, such moments?" Fight you. I am no pervert. 
I'm coming for you, boy. Coming hard. I'm coming hard. He's also suffering from, from anal bleeding. As far as Bischoff goes, I'm going to eat his ass. I had to fight inch for inch to get this, and I'm not about to lay down on my back and let someone cover me. I thank you very much. <laughs> hey, Mysterio, not sucking off anybody. Oh, oh Jesus, I had to take that shit. I'm a man who loves to play, play with boys. boys. <laughs> you know, Pat put together that match, right? Oh, yes, I know he did. <laughs> because I'm going to stretch his ass like it's never been stretched before. And Mark Henry is handling the Big Johnson. The Big Johnson. Looks now he's broken the warrior down. And I'm sure that's the first time in the bong ding dong his stone go eye. Oh, but wow. That WrestleMania spot, Jesus Christ. Dude, when you know Pat put together the match, I'm thinking it's got to be a rib. Like, it's got to be a rib. Especially the Warrior. <laughs> Having the Warrior be part of it. Uh, here's one Seth Rollins slamming Dave Meltzer. I don't know if you want to watch it. But evidently, there's like a whole rating system. Oh, for the God. Matches. Don't get me started on have, the ratings. <laughs> you have a very rare five star rated oh, match with Cody Jesus Rhodes Christ. coming out of 2022. So, I mean, I, technically. You're right. You're at the top. You're you're at the the peak, bro. It's just those those star ratings don't. Was <laughs> it Dave? Don't Dave. don't even say his last name. <laughs> don't even give him the credit <laughs> on this podcast. Look, he gave you five I, stars. I know. That's what Booker and Beppo gets. Do, do you do you know? <laughs> and if I'm I'm not mistaken, like I think that like Kurt Angle has no five star matches. <laughs> Okay, one of the greatest of all time, and there's a, there's a plethora of these people. My point is, Dave's great. He's a historian. Dave Meltzer is yep, his name. Yep. He's great. He's a great historian. He's been a part of the business for a long, long time. He started with the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Mm -hmm. That was his big thing. So they used to send out literal, actual newsletters every month to subscribers, just detailing what had happened here that and month. there yeah whatever had happened anywhere in wrestling that month and you know he was big in japan he would look at everything in mexico anything where there was wrestling going on that was drawing crowds he was reporting on it injuries backstage news all that stuff and now there's this whole culture online because the backstage stuff is you know who, what are they going to do Ooh, they're doing how, this, how do they get that. this information oh there's moles everywhere but he's great as a historian i think i'd probably get along with that guy and that's seth all in the guy it seems like your generate like don't know, I think he's a similar age anyway, but your era and like this current era, you all agree on Dave Meltzer. But he hasn't got a clue. <laughs> like historian wise, yeah, but yeah, Matt ratings don't mean fuck all. Okay, what's the money? Here? What's this one again? Oh yeah, it's Paul London montage. Okay, I want you to keep. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna. Take that music off just in case I copy right. Okay, so I want you to take this right here and add it. Remember that picture of the his school? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and uh remember we did the voiceovers? Remember for the Japanese thing? I did a voiceover. Oh yeah, card? yeah. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna attach it to Paul's clips. Yeah. Thank this you. This right here is perfect. All yeah, these shout come to Mania for putting that together. Thank you very much, Compton Mania. Very, very much. And we're going to do that for Paul. Add that because I want to help my friend promote his school. And I just got a message from my friend. He'll be right on, ladies and gentlemen. Be right on. Okay. So, besides that, I guess we'll talk about real world stuff. Real world, all, like the world's coming to an end. Listen, my mother and I are going shopping for a new vehicle for her. All right. And we're going to get a Mercedes Benz. Nice. And she's going to get the nicest Mercedes SUV that they have because she's SUV. my mommy. Mm -hmm. And she's my mommy, and my mommy's going to get the best because she's my mommy. How old is she, Renee? 70. She just turned 70. So there was a bit of a difference between her and your, uh, her and your dad, then, yeah. Well, it's 17 or 18 years difference, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but they stayed together for years and years and years and years. Fuck, Jesus. Christ, I think she was 18 or 19 when they met, and he was 36 or 37, or 35 or 36. 
They stay together right, right on through. So, and here we go. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Paul no, come on. walking through the airport with his headsets on. That's right. I'm trying to get to Qdoba. Get some oh, food in my system. I'm jealous, Qdoba. I, I know you like that one. Fuck you're yeah. like you're on your way to fly the plane. <laughs> What airport are you in, Paul? Yeah, see, this is, I knew this was going to happen. He's going to freeze. Are you there, Bell? Pal? No. Paul, just wait, wait till you get to your destination and sit down. That way, there you won't break up. All this moving is just not working very well. Try. Um, so, uh, Paul, uh, here. Uh, Shit. Just uh, remove him to escalate. Yeah, Paul, just wait till you're done moving, and then when you sit down, then talk because all the moving is just gonna see. There we go. Yeah. Uh, okay, what else do we got? No, I was telling you about me uh, sorting out my insurance. Oh, I like, oh, it's insane. Same thing up here in Canada. Over $2,000 for insurance. What, is that over the course of a year? Over the course of a year, yeah. 2500 What vehicle is that? Excuse me? What vehicle is that? For two vehicles. Oh, 1000 each? No, about 1200 each. About 2400 for Shit. both of us. Yeah. What, what, what are they, SUVs or what are they? I have a Dodge Ram truck, and she has a um, Dodge Cherokee. Uh, All right. Yeah, Cher big, right. Cher the big vehicle, to be fair. There we go. There you go. Are you okay, Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I, I had a connectivity issue, but it should be good now. It's all good. Oh, we got your first question of the night. Paul, did you ever help El Generico build his orphanage? I did. Uh, you know, we, we got kids from all over the forest, all over the jungle, the rural jungles of Mexico. And we fed them and clothed them. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was very fortuitous. And, uh, and he picked up a few Spanish words along the way, so it was good. But, good. Uh, but then he got tired. I think he got really claustrophobic under that mask and just disappeared into the way. nether regions. <laughs> yeah, he, it's, like, it's like in Predator. The jungle just came alive and took him. <laughs> okay, so tell everyone where are you? Where are you headed? What's your plans for this weekend, dude? Oh, uh, I'm in uh, Detroit right now, changing planes. Here, I'll show you all a, a shot of beautiful uh, Eastern Michigan. I don't know if you can really pass and glum. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but yeah, heading to Boston and then driving to Portland. There's Cuba, but then driving to Portland, Maine. We got a show tomorrow in Yarmouth uh, against JT Dunn at Limitless Wrestling. I have a signing tomorrow for these guys over at uh, Ink Tank. And then I have a seminar tomorrow as well, all in one day. Nice. And then a nice 5 a.m. flight Sunday back, back to hell. Well, you know, <laughs> that's the life of a, of a pro wrestler. So for people out there to think that, you know, just because you're not with one of the major companies that you're not doing anything bullshit, you work harder, you do more. Yeah, actually, in a way, yeah, because they, uh, you know, you're really running your own business at this point. And see, he freezes because that's just what happens, you know. Um, we have a few questions for Paul when he comes back on. He'll be back on. He just he freezes yeah. and stuff. I'm starting to get really hungry. You're hungry now? Yeah. You're at Qdoba. You brisket. You saying you're at Qdoba just made me hungry. Fuck. Starting. I got to go cook some food. <laughs> are you able to stay on? What, with you, what are you guys up to? What are you all? I want to go cook some food now because I'm fucking starving. You talked about Qdoba. You gave me the munchies. Can you hear us, Paul? Can you hear us, Paul? Ain't that a lyric from a Beatles song? 
Are what? you there, Paul? <laughs> like, there's the there's like the theory that Paul McCartney's dead, <laughs> and like on one of the records, it's like Paul is dead or Paul's alive. <laughs> it just reminded me of that. Ah, there, let's Paul? see here. Are you looking for your gate? Nah, I know where it's at. I got. Sorry, everyone. The connection sometimes in the airports aren't the greatest. So this is the result. Hopefully, once he gets to where he's going, he can sit and be still and then have better connection. But it is what it is. This is the life of a pro wrestler. There you are. Is that That's the food it. court? And yeah, I, I the can. Robot. There it is. Oh, uh, okay. You guys, yeah, I mean, I go cook. it's a go cook. Talk with, talk with James. James, take over. You gotta bring up super chats. <laughs> I was lost. Paul, I'm by myself. I'm yeah, by no. There we go. What is that? Uh, uh, put the cap on no. there. No, I was uh, just saying. Um, so the reboot in the uh, scary movie franchise. I heard. So, fun fact. So, you know the guy who play, basically played the parody version of uh, Billy Loomis? You there? Nope. He's not there, everyone. Uh, let's see if I can find some Super Chats and I'll uh, catch up on them until we can get Paul again. Uh, let's see. Oh, do you know Paul, will you I be using... There's a lot of, that was, I guess there's a lot of crappy horror movies they can make fun of, but why not remakes you know it's too many of them no uh got you now no so in the first one you know the guy who basically played the parody version of billy loomis yeah i know him john abrahams yeah you two were in the faculty together yeah we talked about it i had interviewed him along oh, right. like a couple of years ago during the pandemic and i got so self-conscious because i just didn't i didn't think i did a very good job but i never aired it uh so i might air it someday but good guy very funny he had some really good stories about his experience working with uh miramax and he shot house of wax i think was he in house of wax as well oh, we're just staring at him he's lost in fall um uh, oh man let's see paul we were using mcdonald's up today yes he is <laughs> um Hey guys, oh yeah, Paul loves this movie actually. Well, let's see if we can get him back on. Rex. I, I'm here. I, I, Y'all keep freezing or disappearing. Y'all. Hey, me. Is it me, everyone, or is it Paul? I can hear Renee. Paul is back and forth, so it is Paul. <laughs> <laughs> He <laughs> just started laughing. Anyway, uh, Rex said, if you want to see a true horror movie, watch uh, Tusk. You love Tusk, don't you? Tusk is good. I liked it a lot. I uh, thought it was really good. And uh, so one of my favorite cameos, actually, is in Tusk. So I won't spill the beans, but it's a good one. Um. I heard they were supposed to make a sequel at one point. I remember Kevin Smith was talking about doing a sequel, continuing on the story, but that might have fallen through. How would you carry on that story? I'm good, thank you. I'm just taking a minute. Thank you. What was that sound? Renee's cooking. Uh, <laughs> how, how would you carry on the story of Tusk? Like The guy's pretty messed up by the end. <laughs> Right, but I think, you know, I think there's different ways you could go with it. I think, uh, you know, I think he could escape and... He can escape. Renee's in there, effing shit up, oh, left my ass up. Um, right, hopefully uh, we'll get some more uh, connection. Sounds more like Renee's break and stuff, yes. Yeah, I think there was like the the walrus attacked the old man, and that's what got him obsessed with the walrus or something. And you know, so you could basically have nope. 
Uh, see, scary movie, no Wayne's family involvement usually aren't good movies. Uh, the third one was good. I don't know if they had anything to do with it. I know they wasn't in it, but number three was okay. But yeah, the rest of them were crap. Uh, the first two is the best ones. Technical difficulties. <clears throat> Kevin Smith is what happens when you go woke. Um, yeah, I think Kevin Smith, when he just decided to destroy He Man, I think that was his audition to be in the next Disney movie. Can you hear us, Paul? Are you there, Paul? No. Can I hear us? Um, yeah, his early movies were good. Kevin Smith, obviously, Clerks and stuff, and Dogma. I love Dogma. Um, films like that. But yeah, he's just completely changed. James, are you going to watch Peacemaker Season 2? I haven't watched Season 1 yet, so uh, I will want to get there. You there now, Paul? Oh, look at that concentrated face. It's like a aged John Wick. Can you hear us? He can hear us, but we can't hear him. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you all. Yeah. Uh, all right, you guys. Oh, yeah, do you know they're re rebooting the fucking uh, Naked Gun? Can you hear us? It is you, Paul, by the way. Everyone said it's you, it's not us. It's just James now. Cafe D James. There you go, we got you, we got you. <laughs> Cafe D James. Where, where, where are you? Just stay where you are. No. It's real quick. What's Renee cooking? That's the real secret. No idea. But no, they're rebooting the Naked Gun movies with Liam Neeson. Stop. I know. Stop. I know. Stop. So you're going to cram some Austin Butler idiot down our throats as the new comedy guy. It's like, no. I'm back. But What'd you make? Eggs. It's what's for dinner. That, what kind of eggs are that? What is it? Right, I'm going to order it real quick, guys. With salad. No carbohydrates, really. It's like ketchup. It, it's not. It's hot sauce. Ketchup? No, no, no. Okay, we got to bring up some of these super chats, dude. Holy Christ, I leave for five minutes and look what happens. <sighs> Will Paul be using the McDonald's app today? Nope, I don't think so. I wish he would. <laughs> Hey guys, want nightmares? Watch the movie Tusk. Okay. Yeah, me and Paul seen that. Have you seen that? No, is it good? Yeah, it's Canadian. Is it the shits or is it scary? <laughs> no, it's good. It's it's messed up. Happy early birthday, Paul. Thank you, Angela. Paul just helped me decide what I'm eating for dinner. Thanks for the show, Renee and Jerry. Well, thank you, long shot Lark. I wish I could have Kudova. God, I love Kudova. You saw is. Aki Bano pass. Yep, we saw it at HBK. He was my brother. Hopefully Monday we can have a tribute show. I'm just waiting on confirmation from Kea if he can get off. He's off work on that day. Uh, chances we ever see London and Kendrick tag again. Paul, are you there? He's got his... He's on mute. Can I take that out? I, I very highly unlikely. I'll ask him when we, he gets uh, cleared, but I think. Okay, he's ordering right now. A nice. Fuck, that's a nice manicure you got, Paul. Look at those nice manicured nails. <laughs> Beautiful nails. <laughs> hey, Paul, it's been five years since I got into wrestling back when you were at WWE. I remember seeing an interview you did with first meeting Raven. Great job. Have you ever spoken since? I'm sure they have. How many people's in the chat? Uh, 391. Thank oh, you. Nice. Jacob Fatu in WWE. Holy shit, that guy can go. Yeah, he can. That's another example of one of those Sam Evans that can fucking move. Well, his signal seems to be fine now. Yeah, but he's on mute. I don't know if you... Paul, do you realize you're on mute? You can hear us. Paul, we can see up your nostrils, Paul. <laughs> Clip your nostrils, Paul. Paul. Just let Paul order his food, everyone. God, I'm hungry. 
You're making me hungry now, but it's half past 12, so it's not a advisable time to eat. No, I was at the gym three times today. I woke up, did 45 minutes of cardio around 5 a.m. 45 minutes. Every workout lasts about 45, yeah, but it's, it's nonstop. Like, I don't sit and talk. I don't rest between sets. I superset everything, boom, boom, boom. So it's like, a, like I'm doing a 45-minute match, just nonstop, boom, 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 machine to machine, just keep going. And, um, yeah. Is there, it's not a staff question, but is there much benefit to training two or three times a day compared to training, like, once in the morning? Well, it depends on your schedule, ultimately, right? Yeah. But for me... It speeds up my metabolism more often during the day, right? But yeah, because you're eating throughout the day, ain't you? You have like six or seven meals a day. I do. Yeah, that's. Constantly. I guess that's. So I guess that's why you have to constantly train just to keep your metabolism going. Yeah, and like I like I said, I'm 40 years old, but I'm 242 pounds, and I could literally step on a bodybuilding stage in one week. Paul, what's your ball? Paul, just uh, well, let's just get a bit. Let's get into bodybuilding, man. Let's do it. No, man. No, man. Okay, never mind. Why did Paul mute his mic? I want to hear what he's ordering. They want to hear I didn't mute it. I unmuted it. I unmuted what it. Order? You can't. The people I got a bowl. A bowl, Nick. I'll show. Sure. Yeah, and then uh, some bodybuilder queso. And chips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I mean, Paul, I figure we should compete together. We will, man. We will. Fuck yeah. So, uh, James found, uh, who was it, Compton Mania? One of our uh, watchers made a video of you, Paul, like a highlight reel. So, we're going to take that highlight reel and um, attach it to your clips along with um, Kayfabe Underscore Academy pamphlet little thing that's one of our um our listeners man, our followers they made that so we're gonna take that clip there uh, 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 cool yeah i'm gonna attach it to your clip so then i'll do a voice because i have the radio voice hello ladies and gentlemen you do, uh, you do. i've got the radio face <laughs> what uh what's the wrestling news no, sorry, that's a joke. I'm Your sorry. Mama's so ugly. She wears, that's no joke. Your mom is so ugly. She wears makeup on the yeah. radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I figured that's what you guys wanted to talk about, but you know, um, until I could get stationed and pull out my food and show you guys what I'm eating. Yeah, let's see. Wrestling. <laughs> we talked about a whole bunch of. James, wake up. Oh, how, 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 I guess I guess y'all saw the 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 violent brawl. Oh, oh did he ever? The one that uh, Tony was scared for his life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty embarrassing Dude, stuff, huh? It, it, they just embarrassed themselves. It, they barely got any fucking type of rating boost from it, and all it did was make them look like a bunch of marks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just seems like what's the point of doing all that? You know, it's uh, it's almost stalkery. You know, it's like someone dumps you, and you just you become obsessed with them or something. I don't know, but I think whatever. I think they're all they all look like idiots really in the whole thing I think Joe was the only one that looked good because he had nothing to do with it he was just off to himself mm. Were you friends with but Chris he still Hill? has that still has that stink on him yeah I saw Chris uh, running around I guess he was kind of the the cooler head and I wasn't sure if people were going to recognize him or not but I worked uh, with Chris uh late last year he's the booker for an independent company out of san francisco or something and they let him continue doing that while he's also um a wrestler wrangler i guess at aew so rancher a cowboy 
a wrangler. I don't know. I just thought he was more of a wrangler. I was like, wrangle, go wrangle those guys. Cause he, you know, he, he just, he's like the first one there. I guess he still felt like he needed to, you know, be the hero. solidify his, be the hero. Did you ever get to work with him? I, some of my favorite matches actually with Chris, he's, he's really smart, easy guy to work with. Um, I spent, we lived together in England when I worked for Dixon. That's what I, yeah, he did a lot of those. There were, there were a whole group. There were Generico, him, that other guy, Chuck Taylor. Yeah. Maybe, maybe three or four of them. They all came as a, a group. I was there by myself. The, I would go to the gym and work out. They wouldn't. So Video would, games or no? <laughs> um, I didn't know what they did. And again, you know me. I hang out with very few people. Uh, it's true. Keep to myself. I really. You're more I, the man in mystery than I am. Come on. I am, but I like the guy. I just I think I flipped out at him one time because he wouldn't shut the fuck up about Japanese wrestling. And I got so annoyed. And I told him, <laughs> "Shut the fuck up!" Well, now you do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you do now that's talk about Japanese me. wrestling I know. yeah I, yeah <laughs> okay but don't you think like i don't know i mean i guess i can't really say because you know we enjoyed watching that caliber of wrestling you know on the ascent i can't say i'm a big fan of it now mm. but you know you take someone like eddie kingston who's clearly a fan of that and doesn't quite translate the same when he does it. I don't know. Am I missing something? But he was never there to work it. He just Oh, he never went. Yeah, that's okay. That's right. I don't think he did. And I, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think that's the crowd that AEW caters to the most because it doesn't make any sense. Nobody sells anything and I don't know. No, if they would have actually went there and worked, they would have realized how to do it properly. All they did was watch it on, on tape, and they're trying to copy it without actually going there and working it and training it and living in the dojos. Yeah. Yeah. Never lived in the dojos, but I, I did my share of tours. But yeah, I'd always like to go back. I just still, it's never... It's not um it's not really a style that I seek out to study unless it's certain people, you know. So I'll I'll be, trying to get I'll situated be, here. I'll be completely honest with go ahead. you. I figured where could I go and make a living doing this where I don't have to go to the United States? Japan. That was the one place I could stay and make a living, a pretty good living doing this without having to fucking yeah right and that's what i did for 15 years butlins didn't appeal to you then huh butlins what? didn't I'm sorry? appeal to you then <laughs> no i did it but i'm glad i did it i got the street cred i got the stories i can say i was you got there. the cats you <laughs> joined the yakuza <laughs> <laughs> all right show us what you're eating where are you pal i'm trying to plug my damn phone in so i don't have any more connectivity issues renee what brand of protein would you recommend that's not really with carbs um honestly dude i go to costco and i get this like pure way natural costco yeah. seriously all, in my opinion now that i'm older all supplements or it's all at work just eat real food Real food is the way to go. Eat, I eat like one of those one liter of um, cartons of egg whites. I'll eat one of those a day. And I'll eat like half a dozen whole eggs. And I'll eat like a pound of white fish. Are you okay, James? Well, next you want to be sick. <laughs> a pound of eggs. <laughs> Fucking yeah. <eight> eggs. <laughs> yeah. poached you don't eggs like eggs, okay, James? I like poached eggs. Uh... I'm fried eggs, but too many eggs i can't do it poached eggs that's fancy yeah what's well, nice it's the best eggs I, that's I fancy man i always mess them up whenever i do and i love poached eggs you're a poacher what's, 
What's the best sauce then? What's got no carbs? The best sauce? Yeah, no carbs. I've, they've all got carbs, but what's the least amount? If of you're carbs? on the sauce. Well, I'm trying to think what you got there in England. Do you guys have? Um, oh, we have it, sauce. <laughs> get Tabasco. Yeah, we can get Tabasco. Yeah, get some Tabasco. Now y'all have sauce. gear. Get it's some uh, low sodium. Um, low sodium. Um, no, get that Piri Piri, man, from Nando's. Nando's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got some in the fridge, actually. Yeah. The Piri Piri? Yeah, they brought out, in Nando's itself, they brought out this new sauce, uh, Saka sauce, like after the football. Uh, it's medium heat, but it's actually, like, sweet as well, and it's so nice. Down. Yeah, I mean, as long as you don't go overboard, I mean, you can have a little bit, as long as you don't fucking dump half the bottle in there, you know what I mean? I'm not that bad. All right. I mean, you can do that with Tabasco, right, or something to dump half the bottle in there if you if you really want. That's what I want to ask you. I don't know. Do you have Do you have brown sauce? HP sauce, Renee. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Do you have it? Yeah. Yeah, you can get it. I mean, it's clearly you know from you know from England or UK or uh, you know it's. I don't think it's in a special. It might be on a special section. I'm not really sure. Uh, I can't eat it, so I don't bother. But uh, low sodium soya sauce is good on your eggs in the morning. Ah, sounds horrible. No, it's very, <laughs> very nice. All right, you you so sit in the chat. Someone says you have something called bacon nays. What are you talking about with this? Bacon nays. Yeah, what's bacon nays? Bacon. Like bacon. 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 Is that like mayonnaise with bacon? America? Is that like America. Uh, America. did you ever have Vegemite in Australia right now? I can't say that I had have. <laughs> Don't. Okay. I won't. It's like uh <laughs> okay, it's similar. It's like I would liken it to it's like Australia's version of Natos. And you don't recommend it. Did you like Natos? I can't remember eating there. Remember? No, Nato. Natos or whatever that bean paste in Japan. Oh, that's disgusting. I fucking hate it. My wife has some here right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is very much an acquired taste. It's not oh. fermented beans. But it's it's some nasty shit. Oh, Sorry, I all you Aussies listening. I'll tell you what, I cannot oh. stand. And I don't know the people. Dojo and they, I could smell it, and I just wanted to backhand them in the face because it's fucking disgusting. That was Who always the rib room? at zero one. Get the uh, get the new guys to try nachos and like really put it over, and see their expression. They eat this thing. It tastes like a moth's dick. Like a fart. Moffs. Who would win in a real fight, GPS or the Undertaker? The stipulation is the map. Uh, GPS. Who's GPS? Um, what is that? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it means George GSP. Saint Pierre. Yeah, GSP. GSP. Yeah, George Saint Pierre, pound for pound, is one of the best fighters in the world. Greatest. Oh, kick, kickboxer, reboot. Oh, kickboxer yeah. from kickboxer reboot. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like him more than McGregor. I haven't watched the new Roadhouse and I refuse to do so. <laughs> I heard he does like that walk. Terrible. My friend, <laughs> how have you been? Thanks for the instant interaction chatting about films. Just wondering which movies in the cinemas that you are most looking forward to. I want to see the first Omen. You should see the... I think the second Omen has... Second or third? Has Lance Henriksen in it. It's like at the military school... I don't remember the first uh, one second, as much. Second, second. It's the second one, right? Yeah. Yeah, because um, uh, Sam Neil plays Damien in the third one. <laughs> that's Sam Neil does. Yeah, from Jurassic Park. <laughs> Alan. That's right, and in the mouth of madness. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I like the Omen. I guess. Um, I think I'm probably more of an Exorcist fan. They're kind of similar, I guess, even though it's not 
totally similar, but they kind of came out similar time periods. Exorcist 3, though, has a little cameo from Fabio and Patrick Ewing as Archangels. And that, and that was pretty fun. Okay. Angela Don, once again, Paul, happy early birthday. Uh, it's a little early, but you're stooging me off, Angela. I'm telling everybody I'm getting older soon. We're getting older. Thank you. Day, Thank you, Angela. Mm, Every day, birthday. yeah. <laughs> it's, my, it's my birthday next month. Next month. Obviously and then when's yours up. again, Renee? Not November, December, is it? December. December. Yes. Christmas, baby. Boxing Day, baby. Um, 10 days before Christmas, baby. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. 15th. Um, yes. Mate. Do y'all celebrate oh. Boxing Day in England, James? It's, yeah. Is it the day after my anniversary then? So I'm, I got married on the 14th. And then it's the day after. Oh, right. Oh, Scott says his birthday is on the 14th. So, yeah, the same day as my anniversary. Uh, sorry, Paul, what did you say? When's it my birthday? Oh, no, no, I was just saying. Um, oh, Boxing Day, sorry. Yeah, do y'all have box? Do y'all celebrate box? It's Commonwealth holiday, isn't it? Or I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know what Boxing Day is. Like, I just I just presume it's because everyone's got empty boxes from Christmas. <laughs> so that's what I've always thought. I, I got Renee, no can you educate us yeah, on Boxing Renee. Day? You'll, you'll spot your I think, glasses. I on. think, no. I think James is right. It's all the boxes and stuff. You're boxing from that's what I think it is. I always thought there was, there was actual boxing on fucking TV and boxing day when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a kid. <laughs> yeah. That's what I originally thought too, but yeah. I think it's I could be mistaken, but I thought it originated as when you gave I think it's an old traditional holiday but i would i would think it's when you would give secondary family members your their gifts or like groundskeepers or like the help or something i don't know it was almost like now it's your christmas i think i don't know i could be way off on that because it's like empty boxes why would they yeah why would they have empty boxes that they're you know i think it's it's a continuation but i think it's kind of like it's like, like Christmas part deux. Like for the like them old like stately manor homes, like for the help basically. Yeah, that, that kind of right. makes sense. Um, I feel like that's where it originated. Yeah, it is a fun fact about Christmas. I know we're doing a podcast in April, but Santa was never in red till uh, Coca Cola made him in red. Like the reason really? everyone, yeah, it's like it's all from Coca Cola because. Before that, I think he was portrayed to be like in green or brown. Well, you've seen the Santa Claus movie, haven't you? Dudley Moore, John Lithgow. Yeah, long time. I don't know, long time great, ago. Great movie. Well, debating what color should we put Santa in, so they, they end up on red. But the reason he was in red was because uh, Coca Cola started running ads, and they decided to have Santa in red. And since then, Santa's always been in red. What year would that have been? That's a good question. Coke's been around for a long time, hasn't it? So I'm it, maybe sixties, probably. Oh, before that, maybe before that, Coke's been around for a long time, hasn't it? It's weird because I still feel like the sixties is a long time ago, but it it might have been before that. Even I don't, I forget how long Coke was. I've only just found. I out. think it's I think it's thirties or tw- I don't possibly might even be. as I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I've just found out Nintendo was around when Jack the Ripper was around. Yeah. That blew my mind. Because Nintendo used to do like How? board games. They they didn't just do oh, video really? games at the time. It was, it was like board games and all different shit. And like, But yeah, apparently they was around when Jack the Ripper was around. And that blew my mind. Better to blow your mind than slit your throat. That's true. Um... Uh, Pentis Did you know the they, uh, they off as a hotel company? Well, there you go. Wait, what? What happened? Oh, that what had Nintendo. what started as hotel? Oh, okay. Nintendo. Yeah. Um, the only video game fact that I can really throw out right now is um, that DJ from Street Fighter 
two or whatever was based on Billy Blanks yes. and King of the Kickboxers playing uh, as the evil Khan, human trafficking, murderous bad guy. Billy Blanks was such a badass martial artist back then. I guess he still is. A lot of and people you, just make him the Tai Bo guy, but and he was you know world played, champion. Do you, yeah. Do you know who played DJ in the uh, Street Fighter movie? Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Oh, yeah. I met him <laughs> and we just wanted to talk to him about the damage a lot of He was not having it. <laughs> no. So uh, he was in this fucking Scooby Doo movie as well. Is he? He's in a lot of stuff. I yeah, mean, Joanna Man. It. You know, he, he was. Um, yeah, he did all right. Good. Miguel. He was in uh, Return of the Living Dead. He's one of the punks. We got. How do you feel about Molly Holly? She has a giant asset to the business. Was anyone trying? Molly Holly is a saint. Molly Holly is the reason yeah. why we got to the WWE. I'm sure. Really. I'm sure all the boys would have loved to, but she wasn't like that at all. She was incredibly religious. When I would travel with her on the road, we would go to church on Sundays. Um, really? Really. Uh, that's that's yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. They they used to do them uh, when I was a teenager. They, then they used to do like the Divas DVDs, and it was like Divas Undressed, Divas in the wherever. So they was doing Divas Undressed, so it was like... The, the pajama edition. So you saw the likes of like Tori Wilson, Dawn Marie, and like lingerie and like real short jammers. And Molly Holly was in like full length jammers. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she wasn't like a uh, onesie. It always, it always made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. No. That's funny. Incredibly religious. Uh, after wrestling, when she left, she became a uh, drug counselor. Oh, wow. Yep. She ended up marrying, I think, one of her. One of the patients or whatever they really? came in. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And, uh, she was always sweet, man. Always the sweetest lady, sweetest woman. Very kind. Sweet. You could talk to her, trust, you know, it's very trusting. You didn't have to worry about your shipping spread around if you talk to her about anything, you know. Yeah. Just a, a very good person. I remember my very rare playing for yeah, playing the original Nintendo in the eighteen hundred. Wow. Yeah, what? Renee, yeah, so Nintendo was around when Jack the Ripper was around. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And you know, George Washington he... didn't know there was any dinosaurs because they didn't discover dinosaurs to like a few years after he died. So he had no knowledge of dinosaurs. George Washington? Yeah, your president. Yeah. Why are you talking you are... about <laughs> <laughs> Your president, the ungrateful yeah, bastard. You, <laughs> you, uh, my you, president. You, you call it a victory. We call it a lucky escape. <laughs> I guess if I had to pick a president, I would pick Lincoln because he was a wrestler. Yeah, he had a nice beard. Rumor on the YouTube world is that James was backstage at WrestleMania night two to help Roman. Is that true, James? Is that why you didn't fucking join us? Well, who do you think booked the match? Why do you think it was the best match on the top both nights? Right, cropping his balls. Oh, I out. thought, yeah. <laughs> huh? Um, yeah. Honestly, that was um. I actually enjoyed that. I I won't lie. Enjoyed what the balls are there. Well. Besides the ball sack, no, it's always a pleasurable thing. But I mean, WrestleMania Night Two is very good. What very was the good. best part? Well, the main event finished just with all the run-ins and everything, the surprises, and the, just the crescendo and the build, and you know, um, no, it was a very. I, if it's good, I'll say it's good. If it's the shits, I'll say it's yeah. The shit. No, I'm just yeah. I mean, does that make for a better match when it's got multiple people running in and it's like this and all this stuff and they feel like they got It felt like a I mean, more I mean, soft. Like okay. They were telling a story. They were ending all the stories. It felt like a new chapter. Like, okay, here, we're starting. Like, it really felt like, okay, this Cody went in. And it, the reason being is because he was champion for so long. Same thing with Gunter. Yeah. You know, I agree. I'm not a... I don't think the thousand days would ever helped anything, but... 
you know, I think uh, me and James agreed that the Intercontinental should have been somebody, it should have been that Gable or somebody else, not not Sami Zayn, because no. Yeah, I wasn't sure on him. He beat Walter. Is that what the deal was? Yeah, but the wrong, yeah. the wrong kid died. No, the it, whatever. Anyway, Putin, quesadillas or fish and chips, which is best? Also, I think Alicia Fox had the best Northern Lights suplex. Which male wrestler had the best? Putin so. is amazing. Quesadillas have to have corn tortillas for me to consider them. And fish and chips, I can't eat it. Choose your words <laughs> carefully. I'm just saying I can't eat it. I used to. How oh, can you not eat that? That's it's fish all, and chips. It's batter fried fish. I can't eat it's I can't eat the wheat or the battered fried. Awesome. I do like a good cod. Um, cod. You must have amazing seafood where you're at, Renee. I'm coming close. I'm getting closer to you. I'm you're coming right closer there. to you. <laughs> Um, I would go see yeah. you, but you're in, uh, you're in Maine, and uh, me and Maine, we don't get along anymore. We're not friends anymore. Me and Maine, we, uh, we broke up. What exactly happened again? Did you get violated, or what was the deal? No, I just, just don't feel like they're pricks. Running. Yeah, I just don't like border agent friends. Just... I don't blame you. I don't either. I've had my share of Canadian. I can imagine. Just miserable people. Wow, think about you sitting in a box all day. And, yeah. Um, the main the main New Brunswick border isn't exactly a happening, hopping in place. It's not like there's multitude of cars just driving by there, right? It's pretty fucking boring. Yeah. So I imagine. So anytime you know, a car comes through, they're kind of like, well, what do we got here? Yeah, well, well, well. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do we got here? Top five drop kick practitioners of all time. Oh shit! Well, you'd have to put Jindrak in there. I would put my old buddy Bob in there. He had a really good drop kick. Um, Doug Furness. Doug, Doug Furness. Uh, yeah, Doug Furness. Yeah. Was it Alex Wright? Really, the first one to ever do the drop salt. Alex had a great drop kick. I thought. I mean. Yeah, um, mine's comparable. Uh, who else had a really good? Did Paul Roma have a really good drop kick? Maybe. Paul Roma. Yeah. Paul Roma was a great athlete. I want to see him. By the way, he's going to be on the show I'm on in um, Ontario in June. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think in he's June. wrestling. Yeah, it's uh, Pena, 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 Wawa, Napanee, 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 Ontario. <laughs> See, I'm I'll be in Vancouver next weekend. So I'm just Canada? getting farther away. From, yeah. Well, you're on the whole other end of Canada. Canada. Vancouver people are cool though. They're hippies. Yeah, I like Vancouver. Yeah. I remember one time I might have already told this story, but uh, uh Jimmy Yang and I were in Vancouver and we were looking for some smoke and we thought, oh, it's it should be everywhere here. And, we pulled up at a light. We were near downtown. And Jimmy rolls his window down. And he looks at the guy next to him. He's like, hey, man, where, where's, where's the weed at, man? And the guy goes, Hastings in Maine. And like, sure enough, we just drive down there. And, oh, uh, right Hastings, yeah. It was awesome. And then we ended up in this, uh, man, I think Balls Mahoney's birthday was yesterday. I think I saw Johnny. Candido post something about that, but uh, happy happy birthday, balls! But the reason I bring him up is because we then ended up going to the building. I think we were working Vancouver Island or Victoria. Or I can't remember. We saw Rob, and then we ended up going back to the same place, like me, Jimmy Yang, Balls Mahoney, and Van Dam were at this speakeasy bookstore but in the back of the bookstore they had this giant weed party thing with like butter bongs and this guy mark emery who was like wanted by the by the united yeah. states uh they were trying to get canada to extra item back he was it was like we were all like he was there he was like it was like his party or something 
And um, I remember Balls, we were downstairs in this lounge room, and he was like, man, this is, this is the greatest party I've ever been to. I mean, I've done some crazy shit, man, but like, oh, oh man, this is the crazy... <laughs> <laughs> It was just like how cold, like I, like on a switch. He just went from like super excited, elated, like I'm glad, man. This is best fucking uh, best fucking party I've ever fucking been to. <laughs> and like, so we're like, they were coming up to us. They're like, "Can you wake up your friend?" He's like really loud. <laughs> Uh, biggest what if in wrestling I was a big fan of Monty Brown the man had charisma for days and an athletic freak wish he would have stayed in the biz I think there, there man is has a, principles yeah was it like his sister or someone like that died and so he looked after the kids that's why he left wrestling I heard some yeah something like that too awesome guy yeah. that's what I heard yeah I just awesome guy. Out. It gives you an idea how old Coca Cola is. Italy only became an official country 25 years before Coca Cola was invented. So, what was the invention? What was the year? <sighs> Don't know. Not saying that's when Santa turned red, but. Oh, I think that was like 1920, someone put. I knew it. Oxford University existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. Yes, I knew that. Not More 19... people in California than all of Australia. There's my little factoid of the day. This one messes my up, you know. 1980 and 2024 are as far apart as 1980 and 1936. You're Say like it again? Of Let me read it again for you. Okay. So 1980 and 2024 are as far as apart as 1980 and 1936. Because I'll tell you what it is. Like from yeah, 2000, yeah, like to me, from the 2000s, really, I don't think much has changed. But you know, when you go back in the past, you know what the 1930s was like. You know what the forties, fifties, sixties like? They're on well, the thirties. Like... They were coming out. I think the thirties. They were still in the depression. Well, yeah. yeah, but you, you know them time. Who was the big like... dust bowl? Yeah. But now, like them time periods, they had like their own little time capsules. You know what it was like. But for me, the last since the two thousands, everything's pretty much been like the same to me. Did y'all have people? Uh freak out when 2000 was rolling around they're like the machines are gonna take over and, ah, like <laughs> yeah, it wasn't y2j or y2k yeah y2k, Y2K. was the thing right well, i was like 10 <laughs> yeah what's up boys did either of you work with scotty steiner yes i always love his persona and feel like wrestling is missing guys like that today yeah i worked with him a lot actually in the wwe and on independence i mean you um, know why I guys think- like him are rare he's like i wish the guys like that today is like well you know they get canceled well yeah yeah but no i always got along with scotty never had a problem and he always put us over and never really had an issue with putting us over either so he was a professional right you know what i mean I was a big fan of Steiner Brothers when they had that Michigan theme song, As I'm in Michigan. Um, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. yeah, I remember that, yeah. They had that cool little feud with the Heavenly Bodies. The Gigolo. Jimmy Del Rey. Jimmy Del Rey. I never dun, dun, met him. Dun, dun, either. Dun, 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 but I credit dun, dun, Dr. Tom with really disgusting. a lot of my career. <laughs> You credit Dr. Tom with a lot of your career? Yeah, he helped me out a lot early on. He was like um, a, somebody I could bounce ideas and just, he was like a real, you know, he was always in my corner, 
always vouching for me. And Hello, Texan. Guy well, right? really... Yeah, we would think the same thing for his uh, portly brother. No, not at all. It's like everybody loves Tom. Can't really say the same about his brother. Uh, the saying I've always heard is that you would take a bullet for Tom, but you would give one to Bruce. <laughs> That's the saying I've always heard from people. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I'm trying to see if one of those train cars, the train man, car again. I'm trying to see if I can switch this shit around. You've been on some bed today, Renee. Yesterday. I was going to say, you you're looking, yeah, you're looking red. I don't know if it was from the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Does I ever tell you how Kid, yes. Kidman thought, Kidman would say that tanning lotion and sunscreen will work? Um, I don't use any type of tanning lotion anymore. Like, I think he's right. He's actually what about right. the sunscreen. Why? What is it? Does tanning lotion hurt when you're in a bed? No, I just think it's bullshit because I haven't used it in years, but I still tan. And he actually owned the tanning salon. Him and Tori had their own tanning salon, so he would know. Yeah, I remember that. Right. But the uh, no bullshit. sunscreen out on the out on the beach. Come on, that's just idiotic. I saw a video about that today. So, like, conspiracy theories, like, they say, like, uh, sunscreen's got, like, petroleum in it. They said if you, they start coming about, like, in the 60s. And before that, if you look at pictures of people on the beaches, like, before the 60s, everyone was healthy in shape and stuff like that. Then they started bringing out uh, sunscreen, and it's, like, it's got uh, petroleum in it, and you're rubbing it all into your skin and things like that. It's doing more damage to you. I'm like, yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> I do believe like, in moisturizer, though. What? Moisturizer, like after showers. Yeah. yeah. Sarah V. Cocoa Sarah butter. Sarah V. Cocoa butter, baby. Nut butter. Yeah. yeah. Wait, we got a super chat here. Bonjour, Café. Paul, love your story told on High Spots about you and Benoit at Hooters. Any quick Jamie Noble stories? Wait, Paul. Hey. Jamie was Jamie was the first the first time I ever smoked weed was with Jamie Noble. He invited me up to Van Damme's room. You're shitting me. No, nah, it's in New Jersey. He was like, "Come on, pal, let's go smoke weed with Van Damme." I'm like, "I never, I never smoked before." Here's a little trolley train gimmick. You'll see it. Here it comes. Yay! <laughs> dun 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 dun. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Rogers, uh, he'd be like, "Come on, let's go! It's Van Damme. It's the man to smoke with. The man." I'm like, "Okay, Come yeah." But I, I felt like a nerd because I never WWE was like my my ultimate gateway drug. It exposed me to everything. Um, well, maybe not everything. Not sure everything. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, not. <laughs> but anyways. I remember, uh, and we were in Rob's room, <laughs> and I felt kind of like a nerd. Uh, There's a nice sun break in, in the background. It's really nice. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, I was like, how am I going to know if it's working? He's like, if you just stare at the wall, it's working. I'm like, I don't, it's not like stare at the wall, hoping for like, something like to happen. <laughs> well, it didn't really... You know, because I never, I just wasn't, I was never, I was the cleanest athlete uh, in high school. And so I didn't, I didn't, I was, I wasn't conditioned to use my lungs that way. Mm -hmm. He was like, just breathe in. And uh, I think I didn't, I didn't get a buzz or anything. Like I just wasn't doing it correctly. But then fast forward, like a couple of weeks later, I was back home. And a buddy of mine invited me over. And he busted out a little, you know, some 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 smiz, and <laughs> I started. Man, I was like, uh, it was different. But then I was like, oh fuck, I'm supposed to go to dinner with my family. And I raced home, 
and I'm sitting there at the head of the table because that's where I would sit at their dinner table, and I just felt like I, like Arctic water just pouring down my eyes. It was like the most it was like the freezing most freezing sensation of of going down my eyes. I just started laughing at like everything. Like they must have thought I was psychotic <laughs> or something. I mean, I think they knew because they you know they're they've been around them they've, they've, yeah. I mean, you're but like they never they never made me feel bad about it this is yeah i was like maybe 25 24 <laughs> time i smoked pot i was like 11 or 12 dude oh really yeah. Fuck i yeah. was a late bloomer yeah. 11 or 12 yeah was that because of arnold no that's because we're up in Canada, dude, and that's just the way the culture is in East Coast, where I'm from, anyway. My first that's drink, cool. I was like, probably the you know, same age, 11 or 12, right? Same with cigarettes, 11 or 12, right? I, I ever tell you the time I got drunk on whiskey when I was like, I didn't have my driver's license. I was on my bicycle. Somehow, we gathered enough money to buy three quarts of Canadian whiskey, R and R, Royal Reserve. It was like sixty bucks. Damn. $20. Yeah, it was twenty dollars a quart. So I don't know where the fuck we got the money, but I, anyway, we were driving our bicycles and we went to my buddy's like little camp in the woods. And I got so drunk, I was driving my bicycle home and I crashed into the Wendy uh, Dairy Queen drive-through sign. Boom. <laughs> And then I got home and I puked in my room. It was brown everywhere on the carpet. And, oh my uh, god. Uh, horrible. I can to this you day. You Dairy Queen? No, I, I ran out of money. I spent oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. this day, if I smell R and R Royal Reserve Canadian whiskey, I will get sick. I will get ugh. can't drink it. I was like, yeah, those Royal Canadians then had to throw down. Those brother, man. Damn. Then England Bell's whiskey. Oh yeah, I nice. like a good whiskey. I just I ended up yeah. pissing on his couch. Don't remember doing it. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's just reminded me of someone. So there's this guy. He, he was a friend. He would drink, but he would smoke weed at the same time. Mm -hmm. On two instances, there was one time he thought he was a cornflake. This is off weed, not off acid. No, I don't smoke anyway. A cornflake. But, he thought he was a cornflake and he saw a puddle. So he started running around the puddle. Because you thought that was like his cereal bowl or something? <laughs> he thought it was milk. What the hell? <laughs> uh, there was another Oh my time. God. He was, in, he was in his house and I, I, I wasn't there, but my pals, who was his pals, was walking by and he was. <laughs> I, hope he, I hope he was drunk and weird as an excuse, but he was caught like shagging the sofa. <laughs> He had like the little slots in between. <laughs> he said, What? <laughs> we were knocking on the window to see if he was coming out. We looked, he was bouncing up and down the sofa. What? He stuck his dick in the sofa. I mean, what? Yeah. He's lonely, you know. He's oh my God. What the, it's a big the slit. Flake, the cornflake cereal one's the one that makes me laugh. <laughs> Did he have his dick out for that too? <laughs> no, I wasn't there. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you imagine? I know a family member got his drinks. He had a drink and it, I think got spiked. <laughs> and from what he remembered, he said, I went outside and I thought there was little green men outside and I started chasing them. <laughs> it was it was like something like that. What, what, what did he up? take? No, he got spiked. So he says. What <laughs> time is your connection, Paul? Um, my flight's at nine thirty. I think I board at eight fifty, so I got about forty minutes. Forty minutes, well, but I'm already at my gate. Okay, well, we're probably in this one early because I've already been on for like two hours and fifteen minutes. And what are we all talking about? Wrestling stuff? Yeah, just basically the ratings and the news stories. And I imagine WWE's ratings are going up, and Tony's are going down. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I said it. I said, Tony, just give me two hours of your time, and I'll just sit and talk with you and give you some fucking ideas. Oh, really? Oh, fuck, man. You never met that dude, have you? No. I can just imagine, though, what type of personality he has. Fucking hell. Tonight! I'm trying to mind. But anyway, he treats um, during the show. What's are there any rest? What what is it? So while he's producing the show, well, I'll say he's producing the show. While he's producing the show, and that he always takes time out to make sure he's tweeting to, like to his fans online. Uh, it justified. This is uh, every week, every match justified. This is awesome chance for such and such a match. But well, every week. And uh, like you can on Twitter, you can see what people likes. So I thought, I wonder what he actually likes. And I mean, he likes every positive message for, about AW, even it's from people what's got like ten followers, for example. Like he doesn't care; he'll just like every tweet what's positive about AW. Well, someday that sandbox will dry up. Mm. Hey, Amen. Listen, if he's having fun spending his daddy's money, that's cool, man. But and tell your cooler, friends. Wouldn't it be cooler if you were cutting profits and actually making money? To me, that's fun. That's a lot more fun than losing it. But that's just me. Um, Paul, I want to thank you for uh, joining us this evening. Enjoy thank the, you all. Enjoy for being so patient. No man, I mean I'm uh, done with this now. When are y'all are y'all back on uh Monday I'm probably not available. My folks are in town. I'm gonna celebrate my birthday with them. Yeah. I gotta train all day on Tuesday. Um so next Friday. When are y'all back doing? on? What are you next doing Friday on? I'll be uh traveling to Vancouver. So maybe day. we could do another. Yeah, we might be able to do another. Uh, yeah, let's. You know, I'll pop in next Friday because I have okay. an earlier flight. It won't take all day, so right we can continue this in a week. Right, and then you can show them um, right next week. I'll show them the life of an independent wrestler. All that's right. it, and uh, you know, I'll try and get some video of. I don't know where I'm staying. I don't know if I'm in Boston or all the way up to Portland. I have no idea. Go see well, I would um, like to go to Freeport. Ashley. That'd be cool. Go see Ashley. She's in Boston. I'm going to Freeport. They got an LL Bean there that's 24 hours. Oh. <laughs> all right. I all just, right. Yeah. Okay. So or I'll, Ludlow. I'll talk, Ludlow. I'll talk so, to him about that little gimmick thing. And then, um, well, yeah, next Friday, Poland and returns. Okay. Returns so, from the return, road. On the road. James, I want to thank you, everyone. I want to thank you for hanging in there and joining us tonight. We will see you again on Monday, hopefully, for an Akibono <laughs> tribute. All right. So good night, everyone. And yeah, last I checked yesterday, there's like 20 tickets left for tomorrow's show, hopefully less now. So. Uh, come say hello if you're in Yarmouth, Portland, Maine area. That's big it. limitless show tomorrow. Pretty stacked show, actually. Some good names on there. Um, Alec Price, in particular, that's the guy to look out for. He's extremely talented, awesome guy. Uh, yeah, I'll see y'all later. Thank y'all for hanging, being right. patient with my connectivity issues. All right, brother. Love you. Love you too. Be safe.